Rowan, obviously you will have reviewed last Thursday. Just give us a sense of how far you think you were away in retrospect. No, I thought we attacked the game in the, you know, a couple of critical moments there uh, prior to half time where we, we had a chance to, to score. And then there was a, you know, a close call at the other end where they scored uh, to make it 16-6. Probably I didn't think it was a reflection of the first half, um, the battle that it was. Uh, you know, at half time we still felt positive about going back out there and, and having a good crack at it. Um, and, you know, 20 to 12, you know, it's game on there, I feel. Um, the, the critical moment there where Hardacre was carrying the ball and then they, they scored not too long after that, sort of uh, made, made it tough from there. Um, but didn't excuse sort of the, the way that we fell away at the end. Retrospectively, what were the positives that you'll take away from that game? Oh, I, I liked the energy. I thought there was a lot of um, positive application. There was people chasing things. There were people, um, you know, getting off the line with purpose. Um, not always the best of execution with it, but the, the intent was there. And I, I thought it was, um, you know, a positive performance as far as, Effort goes and, and energy. Um, however, you know, at this level of sport, you've got to put execution with that. What's the prognosis on Ash? Uh, he's got a little um, ankle ligament strain um, that's not too bad. Uh, he hasn't run yet, so uh, that probably won't happen until Thursday. So we'll, we'll see how he's looking on Thursday. But he's, he's, in, the, he's in the mix still. But, um, yeah, we won't know until a little bit later. Obviously, the downside, or one of the downsides, were, were the the cards and the, the ramifications of that. How optimistic are you about Harry Newman's appeal? Uh, yeah, we, we've been spending some time this morning uh, looking at some other situations of similar nature, and and also getting some some advice from some well respected people around the game. So you know, we're looking to to to, to see where it goes. Yeah. Are you hoping to get it rescinded altogether? Uh, we're still working through what we're, what we're aiming to, to do there. We're, uh, we've still got a little bit of time up our sleeve before we have to uh, enter a, uh, a plea as such. So, uh, yeah, we're still, still sorting through that. If you don't manage that, um, what sort of options do you have in that department? Um, well, Liam Sutcliffe didn't play last week, so... Um, he'd, he'd be a, a direct replacement there for, for Harry if he's unavailable. In terms of the, the disciplinary issues, are, are you and the club starting to lose a bit of patience with Zane? Uh, this is the first incident, um, you know, in my time uh, with Zane. So I can only speak for, for myself here where um, it was, a, it was um, you know, a state of the game where there wasn't a need for any real uh, aggression or intent in that moment. So um, that, that's a bit of a game management sort of situation, but I actually feel like he's, he's been very much in control and um, played good, steady rugby in the, in the last period of time um, since, since I've been here. So he's still got a future there at the club? Zane's, Zane's contracted and, and some things happen in a combat sport. You know? What about Hull? What do you expect from them on Saturday? Uh... Oh, I'm expecting them to, to run hard and, and really compete physically uh, really hard. Um, they'll have some different combinations, I'd imagine, uh, in their spine with a few injuries and things like that going on there. Um, but we really need to, to focus on our own execution and application and improving that as a, as a key priority early in the week. And then as the week goes on, we'll, we'll spend a little bit more time on Hull. Top man, I'll pass you on, Rowan. Thanks for that. Thank you. Hi, Ron. Morning, how are you? Good, thank you. Um, just on Ash Hanley, if he was to miss out, how are you for wingers um, otherwise? What's happened to Liam Tyndall? We haven't seen him for uh, for a while. Uh, Liam will be back in the, in the next couple of weeks. Um, so, yeah, we, we are a little bit light on for outside backs for sure. So we'll have to... Um, We'll have to assess our options there um, if, if Ash is not available. Um, and that's something that we'll, we'll do sort of Thursday, Thursday and Friday once we know, you know, where Ash is at with things. Yeah. And um, 
What is Liam's injury? Um, he had a he had a facial fracture. Um, he saw a a consultant um, after forget which match it was. Um, it wasn't. Um, it was just prior to me arriving. He uh, yeah he saw a consultant and he he had a, a fracture. So he's um he's uh, you know going going through the process there and he, he's not f- too far away from returning. Is Tom Briscoe still quite some time away? Uh, Tom's back running. Um, he hasn't yet done a, a rugby league training session yet, so he uh, he's still a few weeks away, but he's he, he's on the upward trend there. And um, looking ahead to this week, are you um, putting any extra emphasis on this week and the week after looking at the table? You, they're the teams in um, fifth and sixth, and obviously... You know, if, if you're going to get into the six, six games, you, you need to win. Oh, we, we're going to have to win a lot of games to, to progress up the table. So, um, you know, it's a, it's a week-to-week opportunity. That one, we, we weren't happy with our execution last weekend. So we're, we're clearly looking to, to improve on, on that um, while still applying the same sort of effort and intensity to our game. Do you think the top six are still realistic? Uh, I would say it is based on there's a lot of games to go. It's very unpredictable this this season, isn't it? There seem to be a lot of results that that maybe you wouldn't expect before before the game. I mean, the four nil last week, the Salford putting seventy points on on Wakefield. It's a very that's, unpredictable campaign. Yeah, yeah, and that's you, you want uh, competitiveness and um, that uncertainty as a you know, a fan of the game itself, when you're sitting down and watch a game, you want to feel like it could go either way. Um, and that's that's why it, uh, the competition is going to have a lot of twists and turns in it, I believe, um, at the back end. And just on, um, on the cards and, and the discipline, is that something, I mean, that's obviously, a lot of it must be a, a sort of a mental thing. Is that something that you can you can tackle and deal with? Yeah, I think... Each case is its own, um, and each person is is to be treated as an individual. Um, you know, I think in Bodine's situation, that was purely a you know 100. That was a an accident, a mistake, a reactionary thing when he got wrong footed. Um, it wasn't dangerous. Uh, it was just one of those one of those things. Um, the other, you know, in James's case, it was. Uh, it wasn't an aggressive action either. It was just a, you know, a bit of silliness at the end of the game. Um, I was a little bit frustrated, you know, really that we'd put a lot into the game, but but it being being outplayed, um, you know, and Zane's was Zane's was a different situation where there's a big strong player carrying the ball um, in your area. You know, anyone that's played in front of Connie knows that you got to be ready to brace yourself, and you know, he, he just. He applied, uh, he applied the technique, probably not at the right time. So, um, you know, I, I think in a, in a combat sport, things are going to happen. Um, players can definitely learn from things. We see players over their career, they develop new skills or new positions or, um, you know, most players grow and evolve with time. And that's, that's up, up to the individual to, to learn from their situations and, and take it from there. Thanks, Rowan. Appreciate it. No problem. Thank you. How the Rowan? How are we doing? I'm well. How are you? Very good, thanks. Yeah, just a quick one on on the back of that from Pete. I mean, how frustrating is it as a coach when you when you're seeing you know two possibly three players banned um, in in one week sort of thing? I mean, obviously when you're trying to get that consistency together, how frustrating is it? It's it's always about who is going to be playing this week and, and moving forward. We've got to learn our lessons from the. The last situation, uh, but but we, you know, we we've got to move forward, and that's that's all I'm focused on um, individually. You know, conversations are, have been had, um, but but as a team and a collective, we we've got to move forward.